Hello, 2322. I wanted to go over some of the uh, the Miller's Tale questions. Um, again, the Miller's Tale was written as a farce, um, as a reaction to tales of nobility and courtly love and chivalry. And on a real basic level, uh, the Miller's Tale uh, is, a, is a fart joke that's dirty. It's supposed to make us laugh. Um, you could maybe call it a, a lower class morality tale. And there, there are some touches of feminism. But a lot of these questions are similar. Uh, human nature, how men treat women, how women treat men back in 1400. But uh, the first question asks, how are men and women represented in the Miller's Tale? Uh, ultimately, I don't think any character in this story um, should be a role model, um, should be an icon for us in any way. The men are all kind of dogs. They view women, they view Allison as a sex object. They all want to have sex with her, but it doesn't seem like they listen to her, ask about her feelings. They just see her, she's beautiful, they want her, but they don't treat her with respect. Um, and then, I mean, Allison's 18 years old, and she kind of plays all of the men in the story. She marries John for money. Um, she can get Nicholas and Absalom to do whatever she wants. So you could argue as a feminist that she gives the men uh, back what they give her. And maybe there's some honor in that, but she doesn't necessarily seem like a positive role model either. So I don't think any of the characters in this story we should necessarily try to emulate. Um, the second question, what masculine fears are revealed in the Miller's Tale? Uh, on one level, if you're an old man, if you're 60 years old, you shouldn't marry an 18-year-old girl that you can't keep up with. And he would probably know uh, she married him for his money. Um, on another level, um, you should treat women with respect. If you view, I said this in the first question, um, but if you, if you view women as a sex object, you probably won't have a happy life. You probably won't have a, a happy marriage. Um, you could argue that the characters are young, but that's a good moral for the rest of your life. Um, question number three, what does the Miller's Tale reveal about society's views on marriage? Um, it seems like a lot of the men want a trophy wife. John's old, he wants a trophy wife. Absalom and Nicholas want like a beautiful girl, but they don't really understand her heart. Um, we don't understand her heart either, but um, you sort of uh, maybe see men in 1400 sort of saw women as an object, as, as a trophy, not, some, not a, a partner, not an equal. Um, number four, ask about... Uh, um, the tale as a burlesque farce and the low class humor. Um, I like, as an English professor, I read books, articles all day long, deep morals, deep themes. Um, it's kind of refreshing for me to sit down and, and read a farce, a story with, with goofy characters, fart jokes, kind of sexy, kind of naughty. Um, 1400, um, I told you this before, most of the literature was about the noblemen, uh, damsels in distress, knights and dragons, or the clergy. There was precious little written on the poor people, the common people. So, you know, if I'm one of the people, I like to hear stories about people in 1400, millers and carpenters, real people doing real jobs, not noblemen, not uh, queens. So like I would uh, send a shout out to Chaucer for doing that. One of the first, maybe the first other than the Bible to tell us what the life of poor people was like in 1400. Um, five ask about John as an old man marrying a young girl. We already talked about that. But then it asks about uh, uh, Chaucer's early attempt at feminism. Um, that could be a big general theme for when you write anything about this story. Uh, is Chaucer in, uh, in The Wife of Bath? 
she's not attractive. She's heavy and has a gap tooth, but she's smart and strong. Allison in this story is just judged by her beauty, but she plays all three of the men. So maybe she's the smartest character in the story. Um, you could say it's 1400. It's a horrible life for women. They couldn't own property. There was, there was rape. Uh, no one really respected women in 1400. And you could say Chaucer is a part of that society. But you could also say in his own way, uh, he's given voice to poor people. He's given voice to women. And again, I, I think it could be argued, uh, Allison is the strongest character in the story. Uh, the next question uh, talks about religion and the concept of fallen man um, and the role of townspeople at the end. Uh, the Miller's Tale came after the Knight's Tale, and the Knight talked about uh, saying your prayers, eating your vitamins, chivalry, um, a lot of hard times, death, misery uh, in our world. But you get your reward in heaven if you did a, if you led a good life, you do good works. Um, and in this story, there doesn't seem these characters all fail. We we laugh at them, we make fun of them. We think we're smarter than them. Uh, we think we're um, nicer people. Um, and the Miller, as a poor man making his way through the world, um, is maybe being sarcastic about the whole process about religion, about doing good works. Um, you live and then you die, get what you can, cheat people, um, adultery, whatever. Um, and I think Chaucer uh, doesn't go into a lot of great detail, but at the end of the Miller's Tale, the townspeople come in and they look at what happened and they hear the stories and they kind of judge the people in the story. And the people in the story weren't doing good works, um, they weren't necessarily doing their work. All three of the men were trying to get with this beautiful girl that they saw as a sex object to begin with. So you could say all the characters in this story are punished for the way they lived their lives. So if, if they were living their life the right way, um, there wouldn't be broken hearts and, and broken arms and hard feelings. So... Anyway, that's my uh, uh, synopsis of your paper questions.